Hey guys, Ankh Gaming with you, and we're going to do the encounters now. Now for this first encounter, um, I actually did it, and the recording froze on me, so I kind of know what's going to happen. Um, and I know the Liliana deck sucks for this encounter pretty awfully, but we're going to do it anyways. The red deck would probably be the best, but we're going to go Liliana, and hopefully we get a good hand, and hopefully we can repeat it. But it's pretty miserable. Um, this is a good hand. Keep hand. I think this hand can get there. It will be tight. It'll require a couple good non-land draw steps. But we have to race a Helix Pentacle. Or er, is that the right name? Yeah, Helix Pen Pentacle. Problem is, um, yeah, the opponent just plays Cloud Post and Wall of Vines. Turns out those are pretty good at dealing with stupid dirtily creatures. And it's tough to race whenever they're going to play from here on out. We're going to actually go ahead and drop this guy. From here on out, he is going to drop a wall every turn. At least as far as, as long as I have creatures. Oh wait, I have to kill himself. Fail. I forgot. Anyways, the opponent's going to cast, or make a, another cloud post basically every turn for the rest of the game. Unless I have too many creatures on the board, and then they will just start making walls with their draws. But in turns like this, they will drop both, and it becomes very difficult to race. Luckily, as long as we draw some spells, this guy is very good at dealing with these walls, because he eats a wall per turn. And if they just let him get through, well, we're getting to the life total, which is the important part. And this will actually turn out good for us, because we're going to be able to play Liliana next, Liliana's Shade next turn, which does a pretty good job at eating those walls, too. He will block it every turn, fearing the damage. So we'll have to go Abyss mode on him. And unfortunately, we've drawn basically all land. We misplayed this guy, but he's pretty pointless, so... I have to combine him plus, like, a Fume Spitter, or two of him, to take out a wall, really. It's tough. We'll just leave it at that. He's not good. Let's play the Shade. Now they tend to not block these three power guys right away. They try to wait. Alright, so we have plenty of swamps. Corrupt is a key card also in winning these races, so let's hope we see one. Um, or... something. Um, Innocent Blood would be poor here because we threw away our best Innocent Blood creature. So we're going to make the opponent discard this next turn. That would be very handy. Um, drawing... Okay, that card's awful. We're going to go ahead and just discard a card from her. Yep, Cloud Post. And attack. Now, if she doesn't block the shade, I'm happy. But her blocking the shade is fine, too. So I have myself a black bean burger. I don't know if you've ever had one of these. This is a homemade one my wife made. She's um tries to avoid meat. I love meat. Uh like steak, cow, stuff like that, right? But it's it actually tastes like a white castle burger because it's got onion and stuff in it. It's not too bad. And hopefully it doesn't give me the same, you know, after White Castle problems that White Castle gives you. That would be a hope. So I think we're in a good position. He's at 21 counters. He can add 20 per turn, or what, 25 per turn. Alright, we have drawn way too many... Oh, wait, cancel. We've drawn way too many land. So we're probably going to lose. We've literally drawn a ton of land. Literally. Alright, so it blocks here. Activate the ability. Twice. Problem is, this card is awful. If it was Doomblade, it'd be so much better for this. So it's down to 11. We got a chance to race here. If she plays a Cloud Post next turn, I'm pretty screwed. But if she plays a Wall, I'm okay. I think I prefer Wall here, because this is still three turns to kill me. Well, my turn. Yeah. Now, 
Uh, she's gonna start blocking both soon. Yep, here we go. So now we're in the abyss mode. Full out. Next turn we'll be able to kill a wall and attack. It just costs way too much mana. It's an instant. I understand that, but I think five would have been more suiting. It may have been overpowered, because it is just any creature. I like that it is that target opponent controls because you can't misdirect it or something. Not like it's legacy playable, but if a, leg a misdirect type card would be reprinted, um, I think like redirect, for example, you can't redirect it. All right, so he's at uh, should be 65 counters, 66 counters. I think we got this one. I think we do. That helps. That helps a ton. So we're actually just gonna go ahead and attack. Stop timer. We're gonna kill one right now. The reason we did that is because next turn we'll be able to kill the other one. And it's just the best use of my mana, really, right now. I guess maybe I should have public executioned. That probably was smarter, in hindsight. Public execution would have been the perfect use of mana, but whatever. See, and if I didn't do it there, then I basically just lose three damage on this turn. I need to get as much damage in each turn as possible. Yep, wall is at eight, so I kill him this turn, right? Oh man, that was a big, a big misplay. Oh no. That's a misplay. It's gonna cost me right here, isn't it? it cost me the game. I'm gonna be one demon short. I'm one demon short because I messed up. So here is a uh, lesson. I'm going to be exactly, yeah, one damage short. Here's a lesson. Do your math. Making best use of my mana would have actually been better. I'm just used to, and magic, gaining life and using tendrils is just better whenever this other ability doesn't help. But the life gain was also pointless. So we just lost by one damage. So let's try it again. I'm going to take a bite of my sandwich. Black bean burger. Mm mm mm. Sand's not too bad. It needs more pressure. I just don't have any aggressive two drops. Now, if I was on the play, this would be so much easier. Being on the draw, it actually makes it a lot harder. We drew a blank. We do have a fair amount of cheap creatures, though, so at least we can get some stuff going. Warpath Ghoul is probably one of my best cards in this matchup. These guys are not, but it is damage, so... We'll play it. Like these kind of guys make the blister beetles better. So like next turn we probably play it just because it's the most mana efficient play. We'll see. Really having a turn one discard spell is pretty good in this matchup. Reducing their hand size is probably more relevant than my hand size. So he's not going to block. So I think we're just best off going ahead and casting this guy. He's going to start blocking, but if we draw a beetle next turn, It'll give us a way to clear out something and 
can make the beetle more useful. And we're probably going to lose. This matchup is just abysmal. that card. Um, attack. And we're just gonna go ahead and murder something. It's gonna block, take two. Or take three. Well, we are doing damage. This is at 21 counters as of this turn. Yeah, it's going to 21. Next turn, we drop the 3-3. Three, 3-6, three. Three, rather. What I wouldn't give for a freaking naturalize. I'm sure they intentionally didn't put any in the green deck. Myers told that's actually pretty good here. We have to cast it this turn, or else it becomes a dead card. Okay, that's good. He's blocking. He's on the block plan. So we have to cast this. Yep. And we'll just use this. The reason we have to is because that represents another um, cloud post. So it buys us some time. Because the most he can put is 25 on a turn versus if he played another cloud post next turn. Which he may. It may, but I think he's going to cast a wall. Another cloud post would give him access to all of a sudden every land tapping for 6, which is 36 instead of 25, so it's 11 mana difference. Okay, so here's an example of where I said the beetle could be good. Unfortunately, it just sucks here. Because we need power on the board. He's gonna block, block. Do I kill one now? Is that better? Actually, I think it is. The reason I think it is is because we lost two damage that turn. We we're gonna lose that two damage again next turn. But this way, we will get another attacker. We're gonna kill one of his blockers, so we're gonna get in for um, at least three next turn. Which is the same thing, but he has one less blocker. So let's do some math. 66, so he's gonna add 25 this turn and next turn. So I have to kill him next turn. He's gonna be at effective eight. We're gonna kill both of his lands this turn. Yeah, I think this I think this works. He should block here. But maybe he doesn't. So it goes to four. We're gonna need something. We have a lot of top decks to win. He's at an effective four, so if we get a kill spell, we win. A creature we lose. Um a one of these. What's that? Draw two. Turn player draws two, lose two life. That wins the game. Maybe I should have played this. So we lose. Oh my goodness, I hate this. Get it. Um, concede duel. Yes. You know what? I'm tired of this matchup. That matchup is just abysmal. We're gonna show them what uh, what racing looks like. I think the burn burn deck seems really good against them. Let's try the goblin deck. We just got this one. It seems good here.
don't know how these little guys are gonna do. But we do get to flood the board. So maybe he has to play another forest and play two stupid walls. Who's, who knows? Cycling these guys to kill walls is actually pretty good. So, okay, so we're getting to put down the beats. We're going to go ahead and make two goblin tokens. We're making our bushwhacker as strong as possible is kind of our goal here. And we want to get as many guys on the board as possible. So we could have attacked this turn with the bushwhacker and got in for four. I don't think it's as valuable as getting in, getting these extra guys on the board. It also allows us to now have the opportunity to cycle gym palms to just kill walls and get in. Now attack, just making the walls may just, or making these guys may just be better, but I don't think so. So, I think I cycle. Oh, that wasn't cycle. Dang it. Alright, so we're just on the beatdown plan. Whatever. I think it'll work too. Block one, take two. That was a misplay though. Why couldn't I cycle? Why didn't it let me cycle though? It didn't pop up to like, which way do you want to play this? Like modes. It should have popped up modes. Could be bugged. It's the first cycling card I've played. That's really annoying though. I'm afraid to play it now because I don't know what it's going to do. It doesn't give me the option. I right clicked and I've left clicked on it. That is super annoying. Alright, so this turn we're going to shock one of them just to clear it out. Whichever one blocks the one power guy. The reason for this is, is just making our bushwhacker better. Bushwhacker will recover that two damage regardless. That is beyond annoying though. I think cycling's broken in this game. I really do. So what's he at? He's at nine. Yeah, we're gonna win this game. Cycling doesn't work. I think this is still the play. We got plenty of time to mini overrun him. Including next turn I can drop both. We actually haven't drawn any good cards. These are probably the worst since I couldn't cycle them. Now, if you guys know, I mean, probably by the time you see this video, I'll learn whether cycling works or not, but post in the comments. Let me know if, um, if it's just me, if I'm an idiot, or what. So we got him down to 9. He's only going to be at 21 counters. He's going to have to keep playing walls. I think we just win here. Because we'll be able to throw that guy at his face too. But I think he's just dead. Wow, 
Look how much easier that is when you have a deck that's aggressive. Alright, so guys, we're actually going to call it an episode there. We'll get the next two in the next episode. Oh, we unlocked Prinko himself. So, thanks for watching, and tune in next time for more Duels of Planeswalkers 2013 on Kimmy Hunt.